Hello everyone, welcome to a new video and today is my birthday so I thought I'd bring you along although <laughs> I say that I haven't really done very much today. I did my sort of annual tradition of going to a garden centre and I picked up some pretty flowers there and then I went to Tesco's and I got a couple of really good bargain indoor plants as well that were reduced so I was very pleased with that. actually now off to the pub I'm a bit late so I need to go <laughs> I walked to the pub to meet, meet a couple of friends I won't film that and then this evening we're having birthday cake with the kids and Chris and um, yeah I might tell you about some of my presents because I know they are a couple of them are art related so oh in fact here's one of them it's right in shot here so I'll quickly show you these Chris bought me some tiny little uh, miniature brushes because I'm always moaning that I can't get the details particularly I'm finding with oil paints so I've got a nice new set of brushes to try before I go in to the end of the evening I have some clips from a couple of days ago where I carry on <laughs> yes I'm still at it doing this room tidying up decluttering my studio I'm still making good progress I'm still getting rid of lots of stuff so I'm quite you know pat on the back for me because if you're new here you might not know I find I struggle with this I'm not a good declutterer I'm I get quite stressed about it because I think I'm really gonna need this one day but yeah it's everyone is so different everyone has such different opinions on, on this sort of thing so so I won't talk about it too much but hopefully it will be inspiring and give you a bit of oomph if you need to do your room or your space or your corner so yeah here we go back in time a couple of days and I'll see you again in a minute this is going to be a long old process. I hope you don't mind studio tidy up, sort out, clear out, <laughs> declutter type videos. The problem is whenever I have the energy and time to do work like this, I always feel like I should be doing it in areas of the house that are shared with other members of the family. So this room just never seems to get priority and yeah, I've said before, it's going to be bit by bit and <laughs> we'll get there. I think I've said before as well, maybe in a year's time I'll do a final studio reveal <laughs> and have a completely reorganised tidied studio. So today we're tackling this area of the room let's just go through it. On the top actually I'll show you this because this is lovely this is my Mother's Day present from Rain and it's the anthology of English folk tales and I can't wait to read it. There's even a map on the inside which shows where all the tales and stories are from which I love but there's not a single one in Somerset which I'm really really upset about because there must be some good Somerset tales so hopefully there's a volume two coming. Also from Rain is my old light fitting that I had in here um, and the reason why it's out is because she made me a new one and oh my god it is beautiful and she made this for me because we once went to HomeSense and they had this gorgeous lampshade and I meant to go back for it and then I forgot so she we'd taken a photo of it and she literally made a replica and I think it's absolutely amazing I think she did the best job ever and here it is in daylight uh, so you can see some of the details a bit better now so this light is gonna go I've got over here is it in shot yes it is got the lighting in here is gonna be terrible this is why I always try and shoot in daylight. I was too late today. So we've got this Ikea lamp that we've had for ever, forever. <laughs> we definitely had it in our first house about 30 years ago. And I was thinking you know, if I could put it upside down and maybe it could go upside down on there because the glass shade broke. But anyway, so we'll see. What do we have in here? Oh my goodness. Oh. Right, I'll do this tomorrow in daylight. I haven't actually had a proper look through this bag. So let's do that together tomorrow in proper light. 
that's something exciting to look forward to. Other than that, we've got a bag of these are sleeve pieces. <laughs> this is this is a box that I think Jude had. Your mouth is moving, but all I hear is blah blah blah. How teenage girl is that? Brilliant. This dress is out because I haven't listed it in the shop yet. So I must do that because it's a really pretty dress. It's a proper ball gown. I mean, the colours are beautiful. You might have spotted it in an old vlog when we did the photo shoot in Cornwall. Yeah, so I still need to list this in the Threads of a Fairy Tale shop. I love all the creative stuff, but not so good at the admin. I really should have done it by now, but... Oh my gosh, look at those crystals. They are just so pretty. Yeah, I really like this one. So I need to leave that out to remind me to get that listed. I'm terrible at that. And this dress is here. Oh my gosh, that means I haven't worn it since Christmas. This dress is here because I was sort of using it as a guide, as a pattern, for a dress I made for a Christmas party. So actually, I think I filmed that and I'll put those clips in here because I know you guys do like a bit of a sewing video. My friend gave me her old duvet cover and I'm about to turn it into my Christmas party dress. So it's nighttime lighting obviously, but this is the fabric we're dealing with. So it's this beautiful sort of satin jacquard on one side and cotton on the other. As it's a Christmas dress, I think it's fine to go a little bit over the top. I'm going to try and stick with the pattern side, I think, and try not to use any of the cotton at all, but we'll see. I do like a compliment, but I have learned to accept that my taste in clothing <laughs> is different from most of the people around me. Sometimes I just have to look in the mirror and say, Helen, you look good today. That's a nice dress. Because no one else is going to say it to me. But that's absolutely fine because I'd rather not get a compliment on a dress I like than get a compliment on an outfit I've worn just to fit in that isn't really my taste. <laughs> And I think it's just come about because when I was growing up as a child, I think it's fair to say my mum wasn't really looking around at what the other kids were wearing or what was in fashion at the time. Clothes were about whether they were comfortable, washed well and dried quickly. Usually tracksuits from Marks and Spencers. Well, I've got all of this pinned. I've got quite a bit of sewing to do. I've been very busy with the pins. <laughs> so there are advantages to that. I was always used to not wearing the same thing as everyone else and when I got older and started choosing my own clothes, because fashion had never been on the agenda, I just chose what I liked. At the age of 14, because there were so many Helens about where I lived, I found out some people differentiated me by calling me weirdly dressed Helen or Helen with the weird clothes and I really didn't mind. I had all the other insecurities normal for a 14 year old girl about my face, my hair, my body but I didn't give two hoots as to what people thought about what I chose to wear. Yeah so I was thinking about this because I, I wore this dress and I, I have to admit I was a little bit disappointed that no one complimented the dress. <laughs> But at the end of the day, the way I see it, life is too short to wear clothes that your family or your friends at book club or writers group approve of. You should wear clothes you like. Look in the mirror and give yourself a compliment and go out with a smile on your face.
So in this box, which I had forgotten where these were, this is all my antique linens. So I'm glad I found that because this is where um, I shall need to try and fit in those others that I've got to show you. And in this one, which has been very much ravaged by the cat, that's Lyra, not Rafiki for a change. This is where I used to keep all, well, still am keeping, all of my stuff from making Khaleesi costumes from the Game of Thrones character. I made quite a few of them. They were really popular quite early on in the business. Some of these fabrics are not actually as good as my first round, but because I had to start buying in bulk, um, this was the best I could find. So now I've got this big pile of this grey mile jersey to use up and quite a lot of sort of natural fabrics, stuff that I've naturally dyed using plants from the garden. These are all naturally sort of printed to look like worn in leather, which is like what her skirt, she had a wraparound skirt that looked like that. And then this was the top and then she had a sort of braid going around it, which I've now taken out already. And then this was used to tie it all together. So, I mean, I still need somewhere to keep this stuff, but it kind of doesn't... Perhaps I'll just do a giant wedding dress, because this is lovely soft fabric. It really is nice. I really like that idea, you know. What's underneath? Oh, we've got some cotton gauze underneath. So this is just stuff I've tea stained, I think. Oh, I feel, I feel a woodland wedding dress coming on. <laughs> and this, I might just make something for myself, like just a cosy, um, simple, jumpery type top. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. But the next thing I'm going to do is go down these shelves and sort through them. I know I don't need all of it. I know I don't need all of these. Um, I've got tons of gross grain or grey grain, not sure how you say it ribbons which was shoulder straps for my bottle bags that I made. Again I bought a ton of them in bulk thinking that well I, I did have a deal with some people that worked at Glastonbury Festival but it fell through unfortunately and so I thought I was going to be making like hundreds and thousands of them but as I'm not that pile of strapping can probably go and then hopefully the <laughs> where it all tumbles onto the floor hopefully um, we can sort that out and tidy that up. Also I'm going to go through this hanging thing here. It's actually a really useful bit of storage. I mean it holds a lot of stuff but also if I don't make sure the door clicks properly animals barge through. <laughs> Sometimes people as well and look this pile of stuff on the floor I'm constantly picking it up and putting it, that's all fallen out of one of the cubby holes. I'm just fed up with clearing that up. I think it's time for this storage thing to go. I'll have to rehome some of the stuff and just sort through it. Again, I probably don't need it all. This is Rain's flower crown. I don't know why it's here. Maybe she didn't want it anymore because she doesn't tend to wear darker colors. I will get to these boxes here, but I don't know if that'll be this video, we'll see. It's a couple of days later and things are looking a bit different. The rack has gone off the back of the door. We're now left with a dirty patch where the dog always nudged it. <laughs> so I need to clean that up. Sorry if dirty doors offend you. <laughs> anyway, let me show you an update. So this area is getting there. I've actually moved up all this glorious stuff from the shelf below and sorted through it and taken out anything I won't I won't use. This shelf is sort of work in progress because there's definitely room there for other things 
and the one below it is now the one with the the reels of lace and things that I'm keeping and the the lace from there I've put in these boxes that Rain managed to pick up at work for free they're chucking them away because I think they just got faded and a bit old and not great looking so this has got all my coloured lace in I love these catches and sadly the one below broke it fell down and uh, the hint the hinge came off and I tried to screw it back on but it won't stay so this one is all the pale coloured lace I managed to get it all in so I'm quite pleased with that and yeah all this is stuff I'm getting rid of lots of trims lots of old lots of vintage what's it called grow grain ribbon or gross grain ribbon right here we are on the floor I did say I was gonna I think I said if I remember rightly that I was gonna show you this in daylight well the light is on even though it's daylight because it's a really gloomy, dreary day, which is such a shame. Ooh, we've got some nice old pieces of lace here. I don't remember this being, I've got a feeling this isn't from the same bundle. I've got a feeling this is from somewhere else. But anyway, we've got this beautiful old piece here. Look at that detail. This feels really old, that's lovely. A lace collar, probably. Oh, that's lovely. See, that would make, put a little hook and eye, like you've got a nice slim neck. That would just be so pretty as, just as a, like a necklace. Oh, I remember this now. Yes, I bought this off eBay. <laughs> I remember now. In fact, have I shown you this already? I'm sorry if I have. I'm getting deja vu over whether asking if anyone knew, knew what these, ribbons were that go underneath i presume underneath unless unless i'm inside out no i'm not inside out what's that for is that to just to give stability to whatever you attach it to because the lace is so delicate anyway that's beautiful i think that will be a child's size dress um a lovely bit of antique lace there with some, oh beautiful white work the collar oh so pretty i need to start adding more i've got quite a collection now built up of victorian and possibly older than that some of it and obviously some of it more recent than that but some lovely bits of antique and vintage lace that i should incorporate into, into the dresses i make more often That's so lovely anyway i thought you might have like a quick look at that oh that's got a little bit of a tear I mean, I mean, this is definitely 100% handmade. Look at that. How intricate and lovely is that? Stunning. And like, on the one hand, you feel like you want to preserve it. But on the other hand, if it can be, let it be enjoyed again and, and use it. Yeah, so I, I think I will. I'm going to start using these lovely old pieces in my work. Oh, that! Oh my gosh, that feels divine, beautiful silk. Look how delicate that silk is. How old is that? I wonder. Oh, beautiful. When I see gorgeous fabrics like this, it reminds me why I became a dressmaker in the first place. So here we've got, is this a, just a small, like a side table tablecloth? Or is it a very large napkin? I'm not sure, so pretty. This is very fine cotton, look at that. Can you see the weave on that? Oh, and we've got the name Sewell printed on the corner there so that the cleaners knew who to return it to. That's very cool. So this is probably quite old then. When they used to cart off their washing in, in carts from the stately home to the village. Some beautiful crochet. Look at that. I wonder what that was used for. The, this is like one of those things that you'd put over a pan, you know, to stop the flies going in. Oh my gosh, so pretty. That makes me want to use it for the same purpose. Oh, look at this lace. What is this? Oh, that's delicate and so, so pretty. Again, I'm torn. This could be beautiful for a bridal item. Like turn into a bridal shawl maybe i mean that's just too delicate we could definitely not use this in our household with our cats oh that's so pretty so so pretty <laughs> a tray cloth and some more also oh, we've got a set a couple of small ones and a larger one 
I assume these were just sort of used as doilies and for a tea set or something. The one like that. Just feels so soft. This is so soft and flowy. Crochet is usually quite stiff. There's that one as well. And there's everything. I thought you might be interested if you like vintage and antique fabrics like I do, then hopefully you enjoyed that little bit of fabric porn. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear mum. Happy birthday to you. Well, yes, we're in Merlin. Hello, Merlin. Hello, Merlin. Well, it's now Sunday, a couple of days later, and we're off to dinner for my birthday. Rain's got the day off, so it'd be nice to go out together and um, have a lovely meal. I'm looking forward to it. And I thought I would wear my new dress because I realised that I didn't have any finished clips. I didn't even put it on the mannequin. I was in such a rush when I made this dress that uh, I didn't even get any clips of it on the mannequin. So I thought I'd show it to you now. There's a rat quite a swishy tail in it. Hello, well I thought I would finish today's vlog outside because the birds, I've just been listening to them, the birds are just singing away. It's utterly delightful so I hope you can hear them in the background. Well we've been back a while, it was a very nice meal but quite pricey so I don't know and this service was sort of Ooh. iffy I was about to say. I just got distracted. Did you see the house martin that just flew right past me? We get house martins nesting in our garage every year but if you've been around a while you'll know that last summer we did a lot of work with the garage We've got new windows put in, so they can't just, they used to just fly in through empty holes where the windows should be. So we've literally, yesterday, we've had it for months, but you know what we're like, we leave things to the last minute. Literally yesterday, we put up a house martin nest box on the outside of the garage, and just then it looked like one just flew out of it, but I think that's a bit wishful thinking for them to find it straight away. But they're swooping around the garage, I hope they find it because they do return to their nests every year. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting a little distracted. <laughs> I hope you're well. I hope you're having a lovely week and I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, if you enjoy my channel, please share the link with your friends. I would really appreciate it and I will see you again next time. Take care, bye.